Hi everybody, it's Ryan Jenkins again with Jenkins Farms. Today I'm standing here with Sam Frazier. Uh, if you've seen the video from Dr. Steve Brown from Auburn, Sam was traveling with uh, Dr. Brown when he came by the farm to do the video. So he is currently enrolled at Auburn University and is one of uh, Dr. Brown's students. So I thought, well, how neat. We could go ahead and get it from the cat's mouth right here. Hear, hear what's going on at Auburn and how he got to where he is and then come to find out he's just, uh, he grew up right across the state line from us, just a few miles from us here. So I uh, thought that was pretty interesting. So Sam, tell us, tell us who you are, where you're from. Did you grow up on a farm? Just kind of how you got to where you are now and what it's like. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, asking me if I grew up on a farm, because I didn't. But we'll get to that in a minute. I'm actually just a little bit up the road here in Bruton, Alabama. I went to uh, W.S. Neal High School. And uh, I think it's super important for kids nowadays to get involved with local FFA. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I would not be, i got to tell you right now, I would not be where I was today or where I am today if it wasn't for my ag teacher or just the different people that I've met networking through the FFA. Mm -hmm. That helped me out so much. And so growing up, my dad was a veterinarian and mm -hmm. he's actually a state vet of Alabama. And so we were always around animals and livestock and everything, but I did not grow up on a farm. Didn't have a row crop farm, nothing. Mm -hmm. And I got my BS at Auburn in crop and soil science. So when I got there, I had no clue what everybody was talking about. What they're spraying their cotton with, what they're spraying their peanuts with, what they're doing, I had no clue mm -hmm. what was going on. And I was behind everybody because everybody that went there, it seemed like they already knew it before they got there. Because they, they were farmers, they, they were farmers farm. already, you know. And I was just behind. It felt like so. I had to catch up and do all this, and now I'm getting my masters. So it's it's, <laughs> it's crazy to think how, you know, just doing something that you have no idea about, and then getting into it and just doing it one step at a time, class by class, person by person and networking, I'm thankful that led me to as good of a guy as Dr. Brown to work for. You couldn't, couldn't ask for anything else, but I think it all ended up getting started from the FFA, how it really got me to where I am, to Auburn, because I knew I was going to Auburn one way or the other. My whole mm -hmm. family went to Auburn. You know, I knew it was going to be in agriculture because that's what grew up around. That's all I knew, and I just didn't know exactly what it was. Well. In high school, I got involved with a competition called land judging. Yeah. And we get, you know, surveying the land, classifying all the different types of soils, and that just kind of led to one thing, like, you know, I like it, but what about the crop side of it? Let's check that out. So when I went, applied, got in, started doing it, and here we are. So, so basically, you went to Auburn. You just, you knew enough that you wanted to do something where you had your, uh, where you could kind of get back to your roots of growing right. up kind of in a rural type setting. I but had you had no idea. Right. You liked FFA, you liked the different things. I loved animals. There. I thought about going to vet school. Which would have been easy, Wouldn't, I mean, because you, you know, grew up around that. Dad right? was a vet, well, I've got an older brother and older sister, and we all thought about going to vet school, you know, but it's about the same, probably the same problem Dr. Brown has. You're in school forever, it feels like. Mm -hmm. Didn't right. want to do all the schooling and everything, but I knew that agriculture was going to be the way to go because I mean it agriculture is the backbone of America right. there, there's yeah, nothing absolutely. there's nothing you can do without agriculture mm -hmm. you got to think about it even with this pandemic going on this whole world shuts down agriculture doesn't that's right uh, who, essential uh, we still got to <laughs> eat we still got to eat that's you right. know absolutely. and for you know hopefully for all the the younger age people listening it's going to be our generation to keep it, to carry it on. You know, by the year 2050, the population's estimated to be, what, around 9 billion, probably? That means our food source is gonna have to double. Yeah, 70%, I think, is what they yeah. frequently say. I mean, it's, it's probably gonna have to double, and... And I feel like we're already pretty good at what we do. Right. I don't know how we're gonna squeeze another 70% right. and the 70 years, of growth. What y'all, what Dr. Brown and what yourself are doing is very good, but unfortunately, it's gonna fall back on our generation to make it happen by 2050. Right. You know, so, you know, hopefully y'all are still here by, Ooh, by 2050. I hope so. <laughs> but, but, I'll be disappointed if I'm not. But it's, you know, and you made a comment earlier when we were talking. You said if we can make these videos and turn one kid, get one kid to go to agriculture, it'd be a win. 
and I think I totally agree with you. I don't. If if one kid can go and do something in agriculture to help feed the world somewhere, somebody, somehow, I think that's a win. So let's drill this down a little bit. So you were in the FFA and taking ag classes and all that. You grew up around a. Your dad's a veterinarian. Didn't grow up around the farm. Just kind of like the rural country type setting. You know you're going to Auburn because everybody in your family's going to Auburn. Right. So that that kind of eased some, you know, the problem some people have. They don't even know where to start. So right. at least you had that much figured out. But then the day it came to enroll and register in classes or declare your major, whatever we're trying to say, how did you figure out that day what to put on that paper? Does that make sense what I'm asking? It, it does, it does. And before I even got to Auburn, I went to junior college for two years. And, so, and I, but I went to junior college in Auburn. And luckily, the faculty and staff at Auburn is, is that probably help steer you through, through the roof. Bit. Through the roof. So while I was at Southern Union, I was meeting with the crop and soil science advisor at Auburn, Miss Liz Smith. I was still taking full-time classes at Southern Union. And in the afternoon, I'd go meet with her sometimes and she would get me set up and she just, I'm not gonna say she did it for me, but she did a whole lot to help me out to get me to where I needed to be. And now, so how do you rank getting to ride around? How'd you, how'd you rank getting to ride around with Dr. Brown? How'd you get that position? Well, so when I got accepted to grad school, you had, everybody gets their own project. And it was a project Dr. Brown and a few other people in Auburn come up with and they brought to me and told me that that's what was gonna be uh, what I was going to be working on and so we went down to the Gulf Coast research station and some of the plots that are there is, is going to be for my mine and his research so that's how I got to go down there with him today. That's right. We took some back roads, a little dirt roads riding around but we had a, we had a good time. You're at home. Huh? That's right. That's right. We're actually going, going to drive back through Bruton here in just a little bit. So, And then I mean, the day you graduate, do you know right now what you're going to do? <laughs> we were talking about that earlier. I, I, I do not. I know what I'm interested in and the type of things that I kind of want to lean towards, but I mean, this with this degree, especially in crop and soil science, it's wide open. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, you can go in a bunch of different ways. You, like you said, industry, uh, private industry, university, state level, federal level, or sales. You know, you could you could do all kind of stuff. You got your ticket. You just got to figure out how you want. I just got to get that piece of paper because that allows me to keep going. So, but I mean, maybe day one thinking about the things we're talking about today might be overwhelming. Would you say? I mean, absolutely. There's so many questions, but the longer you're there and the the more training you go through, the more classes you take, the more people you're exposed to, the more occupations you're exposed to. It just, I believe it probably follows kind of a natural feel and you quit worrying about those things quite as much because things are just kind of starting to fall into place for you. Is that, That's right. Is that That's kind right. of how it goes? It, well, at sometimes it may not feel like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing or feel like, hey, you know, maybe I need to be doing this a little bit better or not doing this as much, you know, trying to figure out which way to go. And I felt, I, I figured out that networking is super important Absolutely. super important with networking you know you hear all the time it's not what you know it's who you know but i've had the great opportunity to be able to meet so many people through just being at auburn mm -hmm. and the classes different professors and it's at auburn the class you know you can go to a chemistry class with 400 people in there and you wouldn't know the person sitting next to you or to your right well from the day, the very first crop and soil science class I had, the last one I had, I was still in there with the same kids. It's just like high school all over again. I'm still in there with the same kids. Some of the teachers teach two or three different classes. So with the networking, they I mean, everybody just helps everybody. They, they care about you and they want you to do good. And that's, you, good. Can't, you can't beat it. Well, this, is, this has been quite a treat today. Uh, first, you don't get somebody as famous as Steve Brown in your barn every day and get to just talk to him and pick his brain. So that's been very special to me. And then getting to meet Sam, you know, with him tagging along with Dr. Brown today, it's just been, a, I think, a blessing to all of us. And I think it was a, you know, I really hadn't planned in this series of interviewing somebody that's actually 
going through college right now, going through school, and I think I'm so glad this happened because I feel like it gives you guys a, a inside look. You know, I was only looking at the finished product, what all the different occupations were, and I didn't ever even think to interview a student. So, uh, Sam, thank you so much for, for agreeing to do appreciate this. Good luck with everything. I appreciate it. All right, thank thanks. You.